Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. All right, today we're going to take just kind of a cozy, casual look at Cryptic Explorers. This is a game that was just delivered from Kickstarter, and I have to give a big thanks to Tempest Tome, the publishers and the designers of the game, for uh, allowing me to complete my pledge. I completely forgot to finalize my pledge for this. I pledged, I think, like two or three years ago, and just completely slipped my mind to pay for shipping. They allowed me to pay for shipping this week, and they sent it out super quickly. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, a few years ago, I think about two years ago probably, I interviewed these guys at Dungeon Con, at the Dungeon Synth uh, Con here in Seattle. And it was a really nice time to get to know these guys and chat with them a bit about the game. The interview is on the channel, but it is a little, it's a little hard to listen to because it was in a very noisy bar and it was just, it was not ideal circumstances for an interview, but there was some good information there. So uh, part of me is incredibly stoked about this game because it looks awesome. I, I just, I love the black and white art. It's bold. It's, uh, it seems like a unique design. It's got a lot of really cool theme and lore and story. And it sounds like it has pretty interesting mechanisms as well. But then there is another part of me that is not stoked at all. And that is because of the kind of game this is. This is a one versus many game, a one versus all game. And I typically do not like those style of games, especially when they are very competitive, like this game is. One of the main reasons why I don't like those kinds of games is that the owner of the game usually ends up being the one. And I suck at being the one and I don't like being the one. I've said it before, but it cannot be said enough. I suck at board games. I am terrible. I suck at strategy. I suck at tactics. That is not something that I am good at at all, nor do I care to be good at those things. So these kinds of games, they really hinge upon the one being a really good kind of like alpha game player and that is not me because if the one is not on his or her game then the game just kind of falls flat and all of the other people don't really have fun because it's a total pushover um that being coupled with the small group of friends who might play this game with me they are like infinitely smarter and more intelligent than i am they are like super into hardcore PC strategy games, games that I can't even hardly figure out how to navigate the menus on. And <laughs> so they will just absolutely run circles around me in this game, uh, making mincemeat of the one. And the one is supposed to be this kind of like powerful being. And, and it's just, yeah. So these kinds of games usually fall flat for me. I'm really hoping that... Uh, this game, Cryptic Explorers, is at least fun enough to play two-handed, to play as both the one and the cryptonauts, the explorers. And I'm hoping that's fun enough to where I can experience what the game has to offer. I think that will hinge upon uh, whether or not there is a lot of hidden information, a lot of information that you're not supposed to share with your opponents. I'm not sure. I don't really know anything about the game except for like the broad details. So let's start taking a look at the game and just kind of chat about it. So Cryptic Explorers, this is the base game and this is the first expansion that, ki that came with the Kickstarter. So let's see what the back of the box has to say here. Past the stars and material plane are the realms of death, a shifting multiverse of cessation and mystery. Mortals are strictly forbidden here, and no living creatures have ever gained access to this unholy domain until now. On Earth, a strange organization known only as Nauticus has discovered a gateway into death itself. Known as the Maw of Thanatos, this gateway is capable of transporting living beings from Earth into the realms of death. Nauticus now prepares teams of human explorers dubbed the Kryptonauts, to traverse the vast blackness of the cosmos and enter the realms of death, 
seeking the forbidden knowledge of mortality itself. Cryptic Explorers is an asymmetrical tactics and survival horror game for two to four players set in a unique sci-fi horror universe. One to three players form squads of cryptonauts to traverse the realms of death, gather souls to unlock new abilities, battle monsters, survive the hazards of the realms, steal powerful artifacts, and finally gather enough knowledge of death to escape back to Earth or die trying. Opposing the Kryptonauts, a single player assumes the role of a goddess of death and summons monsters, casts goddess cards, and uses abilities to isolate, cripple, and eventually kill the Kryptonauts invading her domain, or fail to do so and watch them escape with her dark secrets. I guess one thing I'm hoping maybe possibly is that somebody uh, better at designing games than I am maybe comes up with an automata for this, a, a, a solo mode possibly. This might be a cool game where the solo mode actually controls the kryptonauts and the player, the single player, maybe controls the goddess or something like that. That might actually be easier. I am not sure. All right, so let's uh, start by taking a look inside the base game here. So I have uh, looked a little bit at it. I just opened it up yesterday and I do know that we are going to be using uh, my handy dandy corner cutter a lot, my corner clip. So we've got some nice uh, black and white D6 there. We have our standee holders, lots of standees in this game. Very excited about those for sure. We've got all of our big cards here. We've got our small cards here and um, our rule book. And we have a realm book and I think a book on lore and then all of our standees and boards. So let's see, where should we start? Let's start with these cards here. So these cards here, I believe, these are going to represent all of our kryptonauts, our goddesses, and our creatures that the goddess is going to be controlling. We also have here some uh, player aids. So these are very nice. Uh, the cardboard's a little thin, but it, it, it's nice. Um, one thing this game is is this game definitely represents a kind of a kind of lost uh, a kind of lost version of what Kickstarter used to be. Um, just a group of of independent guys or gals uh, making a game without the backing of a medium to you know somewhat large company. Um, you know, this is a truly independent game, and that is another reason why I really wanted to back it. Uh, this isn't something from the size of something like like Simon or Awakened Realms or something like that. But um, yeah, so these uh, these are a little flimsy, but not not too bad. I might I will probably end up uh, laminating at least the player aids. But um, I will take my corner cut here, and you can see how nice this works because these corners just crisp sharp corners they just get frayed and damaged and there's really nothing you can do to prevent that so i just uh cut them off and it just it just works so much better it's easier to get things in and out of bags it's just man yeah rounded corners are like the future of cardboard let me tell you so i'm going to cut everything in this game well not not the uh, cards but all of the large cards so like all of these, the Tomb Guardians, Ancient Servitors. That's uh, probably a sign to that particular goddess there. I guess we should have taken a look at the rule book first so we can kind of uh, know what these things are. But hey, that's okay. This is a casual, chill, just kind of hang out with the dungeon dive uh, look at this game. Uh, you guys are seeing kind of my first big kind of introduction to uh, what is going on here. So we've got the Tomb Guardians. Let's see. Yep. So these are assigned. Looks like these are assigned to uh, certain goddesses. So these will be the uh, these will be the creatures that this particular goddess can um, can summon. That would be my guess there. Crypt Hounds, Cemetery Prowlers, and Spectrophagi, Coffin Liches. Not sure what this dude is here. The Gash Noradon, the Lizard Witch, a slumbering immortal. That looks like a pretty terrifying uh, creature there. Maybe this is like a 
kind of an uber mid boss or sub boss that the uh with the goddess each of the goddesses can um can summon there and then we have the elder putrefier the green lords pseudopod queens disciples of decay and the fetal spores plague bombs Ooh, i like that that's cool and then we have here we have conqueror leeches the maws of warfare goat wolf slayers oh man those dudes are badass uh fillers of the chalice flaying trolls flesh berserkers and then oh that's a different backing too here okay oh so that has something to do probably some kind of game thing oh actually that is part of that goddess there. So some kind of a ritual or something. You fill up that track there with something and unleash probably some kind of superpower. We will find out the details. And then we have, let's see, we've got a couple. These are very large cards. I have a feeling this game does probably take up quite a bit of table space just because the Kryptonaut cards are all very large. And there are quite a few of them. You will play as squads of, I think, between three and two, depending on how many players there are. And these are all Kryptonauts. These are all different player characters that the, um, the Kryptonauts can use to, um, to fill up the ranks of their squads. So again, I will take my corner clip there and clip those, just making them so much nicer. So we've got uh, Zantu, the Magus, the Magus. Looks like we have all kinds of different powers, a starting weapon probably, some different abilities for their attack, different stats there. So we have uh, the Seth King, the, Ab the Abjurer. God, the art is so good. I love it. Dragomir ne Negrescu, the Necromancer. Jean Belarus, the tra the traverser. This game is giving me definitely gives me kind of like the same kind of vibes that Machina Arcana does. A little bit on the darker side, but it, I, I get that feeling. God, I wish this was a I wish this was a, a solo or a co op game. Uh, Casimir Lecrec, Le Lecrec, the Inquisitor. Um, Asteja Vilkas, Asteja Vilkas, the engineer. Oh, this dude looks pretty cool. A T T I S, the robot. Atis, the robot. Okay, and then we have Daya Izem, the tactician. I've heard that these uh, these kryptonauts. I've heard that they all play pretty differently, and, and so there is a lot of variety. Especially when you consider that you have, you know, three different goddesses, uh, six including the expansion, something like 32, 36 different kryptonauts. Then you have three different boards you can uh, play on. So there is a lot of variety in the game. So you will get, uh, you will get a lot. Of, there's a lot of value in this game, I believe. Uh, Signy Grimm's daughter, the survivalist. Alejandro Mercado, the colonel. Uh, Ciri Bokvaditz, the xenobiologist, the xenobiologist there, okay. Uh, Taisto Takala, the commando, cool. Samantha Rokas, the sniper. These people look like they're trapped in these just kind of like hideous machines. He's like really uncomfortable body armor. It just, it looks almost like they're being I guess it's kind of like, you know, space marines, just kind of like being tortured in their body armor. It's not a pleasant experience, probably, being a Kryptonaut. Uh, Hilda, the android. Leonor, Leonor Guerra, the gunner. Gao Z, the cyborg. Edmund Jonas, the demonologist. Oh, he looks cool. What do we have here? Edna Burke, the Guardian. Okay. Uh, Hugo Price, the Director. 
he kind of looks out of place there. He's out of his element. <laughs> he probably got, he was probably some office guy that got uh, sucked into some kind of crazy scheme. And now he's stuck in that body, body armor in the realms of death there. Uh, Arona Bryn, the scout. Helen Reed. Oh, that's my, uh, my friend's mom's name. That's funny. Uh, Helen Reed, uh, infantry. Kaja Vask, the veteran. Man, there are so many. Jesus. Uh, Herbert Hirsch, the Geist Hunter. Ooh, that kind of a faceless dude there. Uh, Wendell Duneser, or Wendell Duneser, the archaeologist. Morbus Rapinski, the thanatologist. Melor Zima, the spectrologist. Kevin Lynch, the ambusher. That's a cool title, the ambusher. Wonder what he does. Uh, Renard Marnix, the demonologist. Cesar, Cesar uh, Cavallo, the imperator. He looks very important. I don't know. Something about him screams like, oh, yeah, he is elite, huh? Oh, interesting. I didn't notice that. So we have these signifiers down here. Core game, elite. So some of these, some of these say core game and some of these say elite. That's funny how I could just tell that that guy was different. Just kind of like based upon, I think based upon his title and the fact that he just, I don't know, his, his, his uh, game card just looked a little, a little more elite. I'm going to uh, separate the ones that we've already looked at as in, in, in their core game stack. Okay, so that dude is elite also. The colonel is elite. I don't know if there's a point system in this. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if, if everything is balanced. It's probably just balanced across the board for all of these guys. I, I, I haven't read about a point system or anything. So we have this elite, elite. Yeah, I don't know. That guy just screamed elite when I looked at him. Core game here, we have um, Anais Meras, the Kabbalist. She's cool. Got that kind of like a uh, Cyclops thing going on. Uh, killer mustache here. Uh, Raul Sabir, the roboticist. Elite there with his elite mustache. Uh, Emil Seca, the researcher. Kind of look like a Rasputin looking dude there. And then we have here um, Esti, Esti Etregarai, the Oracle. Okay. She's got like some robes or something. Oh, cool. A Templar. Uh, Sir Stevenson, the Templar. Very cool there. And then we have another core game here Lucas Kokonos, the Hierophant. And finally, we have Danica Fiala, the Spell Sword. Oh, cool. Okay, I definitely want to play a game with her. And then we have our four elites. We have four elites. So maybe these are like the uh, the leaders of the of, of the different squads that you are going to be putting together. So I'm sure we will find out more about that as we read the rules. And then we have two large cards here. Uh, oh, so these are our big uh, large cards for the different goddesses. And let's clip one of these as well. See, already the corner is getting frayed there. And I haven't even, like, taken the game out hardly. This is the first time I've, like, looked at everything. Um, squared off corners. They just, when you put them in and out of baggies, they just, they get caught on the zip lock and the different seams and stuff. So, yeah. Highly, I, I cannot recommend a corner clipper enough. So here's our different gods. We have uh, Mycothus, Her Rotting Majesty. We have Skazak, She of Restless Crypts. And finally, we have uh, Gorkuk, Mistress of Murder. So those are all of our large cards. Again, lots of variety. Um, you are getting a just a, a ton of, of a game in this box. I'm not sure if this is going to be at retail. I know they do have a web store set up. So if you did not get the game and you're interested, I would uh, just Google Tempest Tome and go to their website and um, pay attention to see if maybe the game does come out to retail. So we have three, uh, three stacks of cards here. 
Looks like these are probably the cards associated with the goddess. So let's see. Let's take a look at these. I'm not sure what the card quality is like. It's uh, pretty good. Yeah. Okay. At least the cards have rounded corners. Um, yeah, I've I've seen I've seen worse quality cards for sure. So I just want to take a look at the back here. So you do not shuffle into decks. So we've got those all have one back there. Um, these all have a single backing. Okay, so we'll take a look at those. Let's see what these are. So we've got that backing there. Do not shuffle into deck. Okay, so these are more goddess cards here. I'm betting these are probably, yeah, these are probably the different relics. So these are like kind of like more powerful weapons and items that the that the Kryptonauts can um, can find. And we have one more deck of cards. So not a ton of cards. I think this is a game that probably does probably does a lot with a just a, a nice amount. It's not overwhelming. This isn't one of those big overwhelming Kickstarters that we are so used to these days. And uh, that's another thing that I really appreciate. I'm getting a little tired of the huge, huge multi-box giant campaign games that just, or not campaign, but the, the, the giant Kickstarter campaign games that take up just a ton of space and are a real nightmare to store. And yeah, so looks like those are some other um, relics. Got some things here. So let's, um, we will take a look at the cards now and see what's going on with them. Okay, let's take a look at some cards. Uh, let's see if the rulebook has a component breakdown real quick so we can kind of uh, get a better idea of what the cards are. Okay, so we have see Knowledge of Death cards. Okay, so that has to do with the lore. We have Artifact cards, Relic cards, and then we do have the cards for the uh, different bosses or the different goddesses. All right, so... Knowledge of Death cards. So these are cards that you get at certain points in the game. The Kryptonauts get them. And it has little pieces of, of story. And this is kind of how you determine, how you um, how you learn about the story of the game, the background, the lore, as you are playing the game. So pretty cool. I remember the designer, of the guy, the guy who wrote this, who wrote these cards was telling me about these cards in the um, in the interview and they sounded pretty interesting they don't really have any you're not getting any like skills or gameplay any mechanisms changes with these cards you're just kind of learning about the lore and um, and progressing through the story of the game when you get one of these cards so that's pretty cool there uh, we didn't set it and see those let's see what is that backing there the rule book is really nice really well made uh, trap cards. Okay, so we have a few traps here. Ivory arrow, an ancient servitor, calcification. Okay, lots of weird, cool looking traps there. And then we have see, relics and what was the other thing? Relics and artifacts. So these are the relics and these are the artifacts. So we have all kinds of different gear, different kinds of things that the different kryptonauts can find and equip. And this stack, nice little selection there. Mortuary drape. A mace of mayhem. A wraith wine. Severed hag head. Oh yeah, who doesn't want to go into a dungeon without a severed hag head? And then we have our uh, goddess cards here. So each of the goddess cards does have a small selection of cards that say do not shuffle into the deck. I'm not sure if maybe these are like the starting cards. Again, I don't really know. We'll find out more as I dive deeper into the game, learning it. It doesn't seem like it is an incredibly easy game. There is a lot going on. It's, um, I would say it, it's more on the more complex side. The rule book does look pretty hefty. I'm sure uh, fans of... Um, uh, fans of Escape the Dark Castle and Escape the Dark Sector and are and, and Cave Evil are really, really liking uh, the look of this game. Probably enjoying playing it quite a bit too, especially fans of Cave Evil. I'm sure this is, is right up that alley there. So that was all the cards. Uh, let's take a look at the rule book here. So we have a rule book. 
we have a realm book and then we have here this is a narrative campaign book so you can play so an optional rule supplement for story driven play so you can play without a campaign you could just play one-off games which is really nice or you can play this kind of story campaign that cover for the uh, campaign book is so awesome all right so let's take a look at the uh, rule book here uh, macabre competitive survival horror and tactics tabletop game for two to four players so altogether, it's about 50 pages and it's pretty hefty. So yeah, this is going to take, definitely will take some time to get into. Past the stars and material realms lay the realms of death, a shifting multiverse of cessation and mystery. Uh, okay, uh, we already read that on Earth. Yep, so that's the same as the back of the box there. So then we have our table of contents, our overview. Here we have all the components, so all the different boards. You have these small boards and these large boards. Then all of your different tokens and different cards, different counters there. Your kryptonauts. We have expert sheets, mercenary sheets, scientist sheets, and spellcaster sheets. So there are kind of four different kinds of classes there. Artifact, relic, and standees, knowledge of death cards. And we have all of this stuff for your... Um, your goddesses, the Gashnoradon, that's that big card that we looked at. Then your one goddess there, one there, and one there. All right. Another nice page of story, background, and text. This game does remind me a little bit of how, you know, how uh, Games Workshop would uh, put together a product where they would mix in the story with the book. So while you are learning the game, you are also learning about the world. You are learning about the characters, their backgrounds. I really like that. I like when a game uh, incorporates its theme into every aspect of the game. So you really feel like you are getting a cohesive thematic experience. And this seems to be like a game that is delivering upon that aspect. So if your overview of the crypto of the kryptonauts, um, let's see here. We have your max uh, life, so that's your hit points basically, your stamina, your aiming and casting, your movement, your attack and range there. Then we have a starting ability, soul charges, a soul devour ability, possibly, uh, hint icons, huh? Interesting. Hint icons, different um. What is that? Where does it talk about hint icons? We'll have to read about that. Squads. Kryptonaut players control one or more groups of kryptonauts called squads. Squads are assembled at the beginning of the game, and kryptonauts cannot change squads once the game has begun. Some kryptonauts have abilities that give bonuses to their squad. Okay, so different abilities. Another nice little story page. And now we have our thing about the goddesses and monsters. Each goddess has a very distinct play style and can be uh, can employ many different strategies to win. Always keep in mind which kryptonauts you're against and which options they'll have available. I do hope that it gives you a nice overview of the different goddesses and, and kind of like their play style so you can make a so you can make an informed decision. Okay, another page of a story there. Now we have a page of the realms of death. So these are the boards that you will be playing on. Walls, pits, special terrain, ground, uh, you have destroyed wall tokens. Another nice page of lore there, different objects in the realm. So you have monoliths, corpses, artifacts, souls, mundane doors, and arcane doors. <coughs> okay, different times of tactics, kryptonaut tactics, how to play the kryptonauts. Okay, so that's all of their moves and all their different abilities and the different actions they can take. Uh, every realm of death has two objectives, each with different rewards and requirement for being uh, completed, but all grant knowledge of death cards. Okay, here's a, the knowledge of death cards. The kryptonauts all ultimately seek to gather oh, three knowledge of death cards and teleport with them to the safety of Earth. Okay, so you try to get those to win uh, to, to Earth and the living. Knowledge of death cards represent the total occult knowledge of mortality gathered on this expedition into the realms of death. 
Knowledge of Death cards can also contain short lore fragments to immerse players further into the realms. Knowledge of Death cards are gained by gathering artifacts and completing objectives unique to each realm of death. If at any time the teleported Kryptonauts collectively possess three or more Knowledge of Death cards, the Kryptonauts win the game. See the Realms of Death on page 21. Interesting. Okay, so that's cool. So you're going in to try to find knowledge. I really like that. You're not going in, um, you know, specifically to kill the goddess of death, but to gain a knowledge of the realms of death. And here we have a breakdown of our goddess and monster cards and tactics. So different abilities there. So it looks like you get some really good information on how to play the goddesses. And here we have our combat section. Victory, Kryptonaut victory, uh, to find three knowledges of death, the goddess victory. Um, all of the Kryptonauts are dead. There are no Kryptonauts left in the realm because uh, some or more have teleported, but they do not have three or more knowledge of death cards. There is only one Kryptonaut left on the realm that cannot teleport alone, and the teleported Kryptonauts do not have three knowledge of death cards. So yeah, so it sounds like the victory conditions are pretty straightforward. And then we have here we have some optional rules. Uh, you can have a draft, so you can draft for your Kryptonauts, otherworldly encounters. This is a thematic and lore-heavy addition to Cryptic Explorers, adding lore and some in-game effects to the knowledge. Oh, cool. So it does add some in-game effects to knowledge death cards, turning them into encounters. There are also exciting and thematic campaigns to play. Read the separate, separate Otherworldly Encounters manual for more. Ah, very cool. Uh, relics are special artifacts of a normally high power and unique to the realm on which they are found. They are listed in addition um, as additional content to each realm and sub realm on the in the realm book. Okay, so you can add those special relics. And then we have these sub realms, which are small little uh, player boards or small little maps that you can play smaller games on. Uh, here we have, this is nice because okay, you have so um, a list of keywords there of modifiers, and then you get a first game setup. So it kind of suggests how you should play your first game to uh, probably like easier uh, kryptonauts or an easier goddess or something in order to uh to, to win the game there or to um just to, to learn the game i'm trying to say and an index all right so really 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 nicely put together rule book I can't say that all the rules are nicely put together but the rule book is very nice it's a nice component so here we have our realm book Knowledge and stratagems pertaining to the dreaded realms of death. So this is going to tell you some information about all of the different boards, all of the different realms that you can play on. Again, a really nice uh, piece of lore here. Uh, so we have the Tomb of Ivory Sands. Recommended Kryptonauts to play on this board here. And then you will also have your different contents that are going to be on the board and how they operate, that is really cool. So the, each realm of death will have different things that you can interact with on the board there. We have the Cave of the Crystal Sultan. Structures, objectives, return her bones, gaze example, a hazard, a freezing gaze. Uh, so some like creature on the board uh, emits a freezing gaze. The Hall of Eternal Fire. The structure, eternal fire. The eternal fire is a structure that cannot be destroyed. Gaze of eternal life. Uh, a kryptonaut or monster is within gaze of eternal fire. If sight can be drawn from any of the spaces the eternal fire occupies to that kryptonaut. We have different hazards, different structures. The eternal fire altar and objective feed the eternal fire. Then we have here the uh, the Bog of the Lizard Witch. With different structures there. So that big monster, the Gashnorodon, he or it is in the Bog of the Lizard Witch. And then we have these sub realms, uh, a sub realm, the Mirror Waste. So on this one you play with, it looks like only four Kryptonauts. But they, rec they recommend four. So just it's a smaller squad in this game. We have some structures, an obelisk, a glass fog. And then we have another sub realm here. 
the sunken citadel. And we have a submerged garden, a hazard, and that objective there. Really cool. And then finally here, this is our campaign book. If we want to play a story campaign with other worldly encounters, optional rules and supplement for story driven play using this book. Uh, this book is an optional game component intended to open new possibilities for play with both the basic set of the Cryptic Explorers board game and the Alpha Returns expansion. Normally, the Knowledge of Death cards work simply as victory points and allow the Kryptonaut players to teleport out and win. In otherworldly encounters, the lore that appears on the Knowledge of Death cards can provide a lightweight element of storytelling and help create atmosphere during play. Some of the game events in this book are triggered by choices the players make or the conditions on the board. So we have different campaign modes. All right, pretty cool. So I like that uh, the campaign is um, is optional. How many campaigns are there? Is there a table of contents here? No, let's see here. We have um, campaign one. All right, so we have one. We have campaign two. Campaign three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and eight campaigns. <laughs> All right, so we counted our campaigns. Again, that cover art is, oh man, that is so badass. I love that so much. So that was all of the manuals. Okay, and then now we have, let's see what we have next. We have all of our chits. So the chipboards are a little thin, but you don't have a ton of them. Hopefully everything, I think everything should fit back nicely in this box. I'll have to find some kind of small, uh, small box to organize these standees because it does look that there are quite a few of the standees. All right, let's uh, punch out one of the uh, Kryptonauts here. So this is the Researcher. Yeah, pretty good quality. Seems sturdy enough. Let's see how easily they fit into the um, the holders here. The holders seem pretty nice. Oh yeah, so they fit in loosely, but not too loosely, so they won't get a lot of damage on the token. I like that. So yeah, pretty nice. Okay, I approve of those. So we have all of our uh, like creatures and kryptonauts. We have some large realm tiles that looks like different things to put on the different realms. We have all of our, our tokens there. Uh, more realm things, objectives. Man, the art is so good. These look like maybe the elites there. Front and backs are different on some of them. So these like probably sarcophagi here. Very cool. Okay, then we have, it looks like some large creatures for the goddesses. And then we have some other large creatures and these look like possibly more tokens that you will put out on the different realms. So not, not a ton of chits, which is good. I like that. All right, and then finally in this box here, here, let's go ahead and take a look at the realms. So one thing I know is that if even if I don't play this game a lot, I will be using these realms as dungeons in solo RPGs, especially in something like Morkborg. Uh, these are just going to be absolutely awesome for solo RPGs. I mean, just look at that. That is a fantastic looking dungeon right there again this does remind me of um machina arcana really nicely made these are really nice boards i like the the little bit of glossiness to them and even though the game is dark there's a certain amount of cartoonish quality to the black and white art i think it's really good it has a very unique style and these are the large boards and they're not too huge, but man, they look cool. I mean, these will just be so great as, as boards to play uh, solo RPGs on. Really looking forward to that. Perfect size for that kind of thing. 
And also they seem to just have a nice kind of evocative look. Will convey a nice theme, especially with all of those tokens that you can overlay. And we have like a, some catacombs up here or something like that. There's a forest here. These walls, it looks like a, like this is kind of like an entrance. So you, we can move through here and then enter this cave here and then maybe go to a sub realm or this wall here has like a structure with a door on it. So it just looks like there's all kinds of, of really interesting art on here to take advantage of for when you are playing a solo RPG. Or even if you just wanted to use this for a regular um, RPG as, as a dungeon, as a, as a game master, that is very, very cool. And then we have, so the, the, each one, each of the two large boards is double sided. So here we have our another maze here, some kind of swamp over here, an altar. This one kind of almost has like a weird kind of like Egyptian feel to it, if you ask me. And then here's the one with a big entity in the center. That could be some kind of boss maybe you have to fight or something. All right, that is super cool. I love these boards. Probably my favorite part of the game so far is, is these boards here. So that was everything in the base game of Cryptic Explorers. Now let's take a look at the um, expansion box. So we have Alpha, the Alpha Return. The cover of this is, is quite a bit different. Um, this almost looks like old like uh, manga style art. I really like that. And what does this say? Enter the Land of Darkness. Requires the base Kryptonauts explorers to play. Within the secret mountain fortress known as the Thanatos facility, the shadowy Nauticus think tank harness the technology of the future to unlock the secrets of the distant past. Within this computerized catacomb, an alien power buried from remote antiquity open the way to unknown worlds beyond time and space. From the threshold of the Black Unknown, the first explorers of those occult realms now prepare to to piece the evil of the to what is that to piece the evil to pierce sorry to pierce the evil of the abyss. Um, a brilliant inventor has been hired to build the mechanical suits that will protect her team as they cross into this uncharted frontier. Her amazing machines and quick wits might be enough to deal with the hazards they meet on their journey, but surviving the treachery of Nauticus and its agents will be the greatest challenge of all. Uh, this provides new content for the base Cryptic Explorers tabletop game. So this comes with... Um, Another goddess, and I think, how many goddesses? Three goddesses and a handful of uh, kryptonauts. So here we have our chits here. The haunted idol, the night hag, the ancient monolith. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six different, um, six different kryptonauts that come with this game. Again, we are going to, I am going to have to go through my, um, Go through with my corner cutter on all of these. So we have uh, this goddess here. So we have a uh, specter of Pugira, the betrayed one. We have uh, Thatra, the priestess of obsidian. And Samnosa, the queen of oblivion. Okay, and then here we have our... So these are all alpha. So this is this game is kind of like the prequel. It takes place... This is, these are like the earlier Kryptonauts that went in first. I'm wondering if maybe they're a little bit weaker because maybe they haven't gotten the technology together yet. I don't know about that. That's just something I think I'm thinking of since they are known as the alphas. And it looks like we do have... Yeah, the same kind of uh, classes as uh, in the base game. So we have uh, Jella Matrasi, the bio philosopher. We have Sven Marr, the paleontologist or the paleolinguist. Very cool. Paleolinguist. I like that. Uh, Sigara Kojiro, the um, Omnioji. Raimu Ben Tanuk, the um, menagerist. I like that even, I mean, it's like they're not depicted in the pictures, but there is, there does seem to be an attempt to 
make the um, explorers from different nationalities. And I do appreciate that. Emily Ansel, the inventor. I'm sure somebody just got really upset that I talked about diversity in a board game because people always, some somebody, some small handful of people always are upset if you mention diversity in board gaming. Totally bizarre. Uh, Scott Burton, the Gothi or the Gothi. All right, very cool. And then this game, this um, expansion came with book three, The Alpha Return, a macabre sci-fi adventure in the realms of death, lore writing by Sophia Sudikin. And this book was by Stuart Sudikin. So I think it was Stuart that I met. So this was book one. Book one came with Lurker magazine. And then book three comes with the expansion. I'm not sure where book two is. I probably forgot to buy it because I, I never go all in on games. So I'm probably missing book two. And book two will probably be the one that's worth like $500 in the future. That always happens to me. The, the thing I don't get is the one thing that ends up being like worth a ton of money. <laughs> and then we have our cards here. So we've got um, different cards for the different goddesses. Uh, let's see here. Yep, so that's all one goddess. Again, we have the cards that you're not supposed to mix in there. Kite Distortion, Obsidian Manifest, Precipice of Vitae. All right. And then we've got our other goddess cards here. Do not mix in. So that's for our second goddess there. Witch Writing, Mourner's Lament, The End of the End, Vertigo, Catatonic, and then finally, our last set of cards for our last goddess. Okay, so we don't get any new relics or any new um, knowledge of death cards in the expansion. You just get your goddess cards here. Transposition, Distortion, Gravitation, Lodomancy, Mass Teleportation, Mastery, Supermassive. Very cool. All right. Well, hey guys, that was a long and super casual, super chill uh, look at kind of a first look at Kryptonauts, just kind of setting my expectations. I'm really looking forward to learning the game. I'm really looking forward to learning about the game, about the game's lore. I'm looking forward to reading these books because I know that the writing, the writing I have read is really good and I think it's going to be interesting. I'm hoping that the game is fun to play just uh, by myself. Uh, playing two-handed, so I'll probably set this up and um, have some kind of battle report or a slight review of the game, just uh, playing it how I can. Hopefully, eventually, I will at least find somebody like super fun and and chill to play the game against, so I can do a more of a proper review of how the game really should be experienced. So, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Cryptic Explorers, and we will talk to you later. Bye, bye.